So I'm up here with tools. See that? Yeah, okay. And um, validate CSS, validate HTML. If you do that, you're going to get this message saying, oh, can't be checked. And you think, oh, crap, what happened? Did I do something wrong? Well, sort of. Um, but it's really easy to fix. Go all the way down to the bottom. Local CSS, local HTML. Because what you're doing is not on the internet, that these up at the top don't work. But down at the bottom, we're working locally, so these are going to be just fine. Okay? So let's validate local HTML. And, oh, this is great. Look at this. Only three errors. Um, the range in the class for the project for the week three project that's that's not the one you just did but the one previous to that the range was from a high of a hundred errors to a low of 13. Uh, the mean in other words half were more and half were less was 32. so that means that if you're sort of in the middle of the class you had about 30 errors so that's you know it, like I said at this stage of the game that's not surprising um, now, once you know how to use the validator, though, you can fix all this, or hopefully most of it. Um, so you scroll down. So ignore all this. All right, you don't need to understand that. Ignore all this. Um, and what you're going to find, and this is what I think freaks people out a little bit, there's sometimes these very long explanations. And there's all stuff you think, holy cow, I have no idea what that's talking about. Try and focus on what problem. This is the problem right here. Attribute alt exists. It cannot be used for this element. So what that's saying is that for some reason, you're trying to use an alt tag, but it can't be used. Now, why is that? Well, we're going to have to look at our source to see what it is. It's line 153. Okay, now, by the way, here, here's the thing, and this is, this is actually kind of interesting. This is why the Web Developer Toolbar is so helpful. So we go to look at this. It says line 153. Okay, if we want to be smart about this, if you go over here and click anywhere, oh, shoot, I keep clicking on, the, on a, on a um, link, which is not really what I want. I don't want a link. Sorry, those links get me every time. Um, back to these. View source click a line that doesn't have a link on it, like here. Notice down there, we're in line 144, so it tells us exactly where we are. And the error was in line 153. So I'm going to go down here. It's 162, 59, 57, 56. All right, it's in line 153. So it's in this line right here. So we know exactly where the problem is. Alt equals, boy, that's interesting. Why is it not? Oh, I, I'm going to guess at what the problem is. And the, what you have to do is just try it. Try fixing it and see if it works. I'm going to guess that this apostrophe in here is actually acting as if it were closing this quote. I don't know that for sure. I'm not that for 100% sure, but I'm guessing that's what the problem is. So in your alt text, I don't think you can use apostrophes or extra quotes because it confuses with these two quotes that are marking the start and the end of it. So what we'd have to do is open that file in Text Wrangler, take that out, save it, and run the validator again. So it becomes a trial and error process. Yeah, I know, and that's um, yeah, that's something we're not going to deal with right now. But that 
ideally those links shouldn't be actually clickable when they're in the source itself. But that's kind of a sidelight that I don't want to get caught up in that right now. Let's get back to the validator for a second. And here's another, okay, attribute target exists but cannot be used for this element. All right, if you haven't used this yet, there's this thing called target that you can put in with your link. And when you click on the link, it opens a new browser window. And you get that by saying target equals underscore blank. All right, problem is in XHTML strict, that's not a legal thing to do. Uh, if we use XHTML transitional, see it says right here, you must use the transitional document type to use that. So um, I don't want to get into the whole argument, but the idea of opening new browser windows is something people go back and forth about. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It's kind of a design decision you have to make. But just so you know, as far as the validator goes, if it's XHTML strict, you cannot use target. Um, when I'm looking at these sort of things to grade them, if that was the only error in the document, I wouldn't count as an error because I don't consider that to be a really serious error. That's just me. You know, it's strictly speaking not valid, but to me that's not a real uh, significant error. So I would ignore that if I were grading this. Um, and then when you get this parsing error, and this is something you're going to see a lot in um, CSS. You're going to see parse errors. Parse errors usually are some sort of technical thing like you've left off a quote mark, you've got an extra quote mark, you've left off a semicolon, you've got a semicolon where you should have a colon or something like that. So it's usually um, a misplaced punctuation mark, a leftover punctuation mark that doesn't belong there. Let's see if we can find that. Line 156. We're down here again. Somewhere there's a parsing error in this line. So, okay, we've got opening equals quote, quote equals, there's another quote, target equals blank. Um, okay, I'm not seeing the parse error in that one right offhand. Um, those can be sometimes really annoying because it can be some very small little thing that you don't always spot. Um, here? I think there's probably underscores and we just can't see them because of that underline. Do you think that's correct, Saranda? I think, I think there's actually underscores that get covered over by the, un uh, by the underlining. But yeah, that possibly could be a problem. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing it right offhand. Um, so at that point, we've kind of looked at the three errors. This one, I think we know the problem. I think getting rid of that is going to fix it. This one, target equals blank, is the problem. And I'm going to say for this class, that's acceptable, even though, strictly speaking, it's not valid. And we should probably use the transitional doc type if we're going to do that. Um, and this one, I, I don't know what it is. We'd have to probably spend a little bit of time futzing around with that, which um, I don't want to do right now.